going back to the topic of the church, how essential is the church in filling up that vacuum as well? Yes, God is to fill that. Now, why would I, if I have God, why would I still need the church to fill up that vacuum? You know, how how essential is um, the church in our spiritual growth? Um, and I will ask that question to Rabbi Omi. Yeah, okay. Rabbi Omi, please. Okay. So, um, I, I would say, um, so let me also come from the, the aspect of our body, for instance. So I say mine is composed of tripartite bean. So I want to take on the body, for instance. When you when you, when the child is giving birth to, so there is this stage of where uh, the child has to grow, has to number one has to feed on liquid, I mean on water, and then a time comes the, the child has grip of water, and then he can now move on to the next level of taking milk. Okay. And then there will be constant breastfeeding and all that. At the time we come, the child can now grow by taking, you know, other solid material <laughs> like uh, pap and and some other, you know, other things like uh, eating rice, eating noodles, eating all those other things. So you see these stages, the phases of growth. So the church we are looking at now, as an individual, you are born again. You are connected to to God, you say, oh, you're giving your life to Christ. And you won't say you don't need a church because the church is a, is the place where you are fed. It's a place, Bible said, as a new child, as a, you know, new babe, say, desire the sincere milk of the world that you may grow thereby. So if, if, if you don't eat the word, you can't grow. And the, but the church, which is the center, the, the, the center of knowledge, is where we all go, you know, and the word of God is what it demystifies for us, simplify for us to understand, to be able to digest it. And then we can understand and we can grow. So as, as a believer, you can't say you don't need a church. Even though you have the word, the Bible in your hand, and you can actually study it on your own at all. But there's that, a level, you know, of understanding you need. When you belong to the body of Christ, he say, he say, when you 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 you, you see a, a fellow believer, you are encouraged. When you hear testimony of other believers who are, are passing through the same challenge you are passing through, or they have overcome, you know, same orders that you are still passing through, it will encourage your faith. It will build your faith. You can't do that individually, as a as a person. So the church is very important uh, for us as a believer. Awesome. Thank you for that, Rob. Kilichi, would you have anything to add to that response? Yes, I would love to. Rob, let me say very important things. Um, somebody may wonder, well, you know, why do I need to be fed in the church where I have my Bible and I can be fed with the Lord? And I think he talked a little on that at the end. And I just want to add to that. There's something that you read about the church throughout scripture. There's this word that's constantly used, edification, building up. Um, in Ephesians 4, um, the Bible talked about how God sets. He was talking about the gifts God gave the church, and he talked about the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the evangelists. And all these people are supposed to be for the equipping of the believers. Now, the truth of the matter is that every single one of us, has been, every single one that is a child of God, every believer, everyone that has been called out of darkness, there's a certain gift that you are to the church, to the body of Christ. Maybe your gift might be as a teacher. Maybe yours might be as a witness. But you, you don't have it all. That's the challenge. You don't have everything. And that is why God made us to be need each other. So that it's, it should be that when we gather together, multiple gifts are represented. And so that, for example, perhaps I may not be called into just as an example the uh, ministry of help maybe i'm not maybe there is someone that has been called into that in the church um, circle or fellowship at that mean when we come together i i watch them minister i receive their ministry and i'm also equipped that even tomorrow i might even begin to minister help just like they do but there's an evangelist that was someone called to be an evangelist and maybe i'm not called to be that maybe i'm not giving that as a gift maybe my own might just be teaching or maybe prophecy now the person i would receive their ministry and then i also 
grow in that. On the other hand, if I withhold myself from belonging to a body or to an expression of the church, I'm denying the church of the building up that could happen if I were in their midst. So if I was a gift as a pastor, for example, and I'm not in, there's no one to pastor, right? I'm denying God of that opportunity to use me to pastor vessels, to shepherd people. And that's selfish, right? So we need we need one another. Like there's the connection of Rabbi Amin was talking about how we receive testimonies and it inspires us. To add to that, there's also this um, receiving and edification, receiving of giftings of ministry and um, giving of ministries for the sake of building up. It's when these things happen that we are built up. If you're by yourself, you have unbalanced diet. If you're in the church, it's going to be more balanced. Yes. I just wanted to attempt that. Thank you very much for that. Um, this was a necessary discussion because um, we live in a time where a lot of young people are beginning to believe that it is possible and unfortunately the media around us and the big people around us popularize it and make it sound like it's possible to actually be a christian and um, not be part of the church and we want to appreciate you for the insight you have brought up that to it and um, the two things i can really take away from it is that number one you have to be edified and this is important number two um if you are really you said something that actually you took the words out of my mouth you said um such a person will be selfish if you are truly saved um you should also be saved from being selfish that will not be a part of the fruit of the spirit so um, i think this is something for our viewers to think that um, the church is also important and um, crucial for our spiritual growth so i'm going to ask now that we have established that the church is from god and god sanctions it and um god wants us to be part of the church now, uh, I, I was going to ask a question, but then I remember the words of Jesus in Revelation chapter 3 from verse 1. He was actually talking to a church. And without missing words, he told them, you have a name that you live, but you are dead. So can a church, obviously a church can be dead because we wouldn't say Jesus is lying. But then what can we see? Or, or what are the parameters? What are the indices? What do you see and say, oh, this church is dead? Bro, Kelechi, I'll start from you. Okay, well, yeah, that's a very important question. Um, yeah, church being dead is not a good thing for sure. I, I, you know, when you look at the way the church is built, the body and the head, um, just simply put, the church is dead when it's disconnected from its head. Um, and excuse me, I'm so sorry about that. Um, the church is dead is when it is connected from its head, which is Christ. Yes, thank you. So, um, so it's a very important question, very important question that you asked. Um, a church is dead if it's disconnected from its head, which is Christ. Um, in the book of Ephesians 5, when the Bible was talking about comparing the relationship between Christ and the church, the relationship between a husband and his wife, one of the things that the Bible said was that the Christ nourishes the church. Right? And that's how the husband should care for his wife. So Christ is the source of nourishment for, for the church. It's a source of nourishment, source of direction. And if a church, if a fellowship decides to disconnect from Christ, they will be dead. Now, what are the indices, you may ask? So what are the indices of a person that is disconnected or a people that are disconnected from Christ? They have their own personal agenda. They are doing their will that Christ did not send them to do. So one of the things that Jesus did was he, he, he said, I've come in the volume of books that's been written of me to do your will, O God. And we had seen at the beginning when we're talking that one of the things the church is said to do is to display the excellencies of God, the manifold wisdom of God. You don't do this thing by your creative mindset. You do it by yielding to the will of God. And so any church or any group of people that are doing their own thing is a sign. It's one of the signs that a church is dead. Um, maybe another sign I may, I may just add before another person talks on this is that um, Jesus is kicked out. You know, in one of the scriptures that we, we 
quote in the book of Revelations. Talked about Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens, I will enter and I will sup with him. Now, if you really read that scripture in context, it was actually talking about the door of a church. Um, Jesus Christ, it's basically like these guys have kicked him out. And what he was saying was, if there is one person in that fellowship group that is able to accept him back, he is going to come back to the church. And so another in this index that the church is dead is that um, the Holy Spirit is out of the service. So, you know, we subdued to the atmosphere. We have our own thoughts. We have our own agenda. We don't include him. We might be praying, but our hearts are not sincerely um, connected to him. And of course, the, with all these things I mentioned, there are other plethora of things that come out. People living in sin, people cold about the commandments of God, um, people not loving one another. Whenever the Holy Spirit is out of a place, of course, his fruits will be out. So there will be no love, joy, peace, and all of all the other things you can think about. So I will stop here and um, let's speak. Thank you, sir. Rabbi, I'm sure you have something to add to that. Yeah, so uh, I'll take my, my uh, uh, vocation has really done uh, justice to that question. So but let me read from uh, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, John chapter 15, I'll quickly read. Uh, I am divine and my, uh, my, my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it might bring forth more fruit. Now, go to verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. He says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So, a fruitless church is a dead church. Okay. So, Bokelish mentioned some of some of those uh, fruits, you know, like love and or, or the other ones that are in, in the book of Ephesians, sorry, Galatians. So, we can see that if there's no love, there's there's no passion for God, no desire for for the things of God, the commandment of God, we just trample them on their feet, and and people live in secret sin, you know. There's no desire to, to, to render service, you know, selfless service for one another. You know, we, 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 know, we voluntarily flaunt the commandment of God, you know, and you don't preach for any soul in a year as a believer. It doesn't move you. You are fine. You are good. And you're not bearing fruits. And it, so that the entire church is just dead. That just, that's just so. And it begins from an individual to the collective body in that particular, I mean, that particular church or the body as a whole. So, and the Holy Spirit is totally out of the of the of the equation. But wherever the Spirit of God is, there is what there is liberty. Yeah, there is freedom from sin. There is fruit. There is abundance. And it 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 it. Jesus even said when he was going, he told the disciples that you know that they are sorrowful, but it's expedient for him to go. That when he goes, he can send the comforter. And when the comforter comes, what's the job? It's so simple. He will what? He will teach them all things. And he will reveal, he will, sorry, he will convince the world of sin. And he will teach them all things that he has told them. So when the Holy Spirit is out of the equation, all those things that Jesus said the Spirit of God will do, they will just be there. So there will be, there will be strife. There will be gossiping, backbiting in the church. And the most different things you begin to see in display in the church. And that's a, a pure sign that the church is totally dead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Bro, Abai on me and Bakilichi. Thank you for those answers. So you've kind of touched on this in uh, the answers that you've given and the insight that you've shared on the benefits or even the advantage of belonging to a church. If you had to expand on that, um, in a nutshell, what are some, or maybe several nutshells, <laughs> what are some advantages or some benefits of belonging to a church, a church that's alive, I'm, I would say. What are some advantages of belonging to a church? 
Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> I, I wanted to be sh- I wanted to be sure. So um there was this quote my, my pastor said last week, uh last week Sunday, and since then it has been it has been kind of ringing on my head since then. Says as believer, okay, we we glue together. Right. Mm? And separately, separated we die out. Mm. Mm? So there's when you are in the body of Christ as a unit, there's this strength we derive from one another. Okay, so I'll put it like there's this nutrient, <laughs> you know, just still in this uh, John chapter 15. So look at that tree. All the branches are deriving their nutrients from the main branch and from the roots. Okay, so anyone that is cut away from the main tree. You just give it time, maybe just a week. There about you begin to see the leaf begin to change color, yeah, yes, <laughs> and it's already dying out. So a living in a living church, when you see a believer in that living church, even a sinner coming to join that church, okay. hmm, gradually, eh, not not by the time the, the the believer hears the word constantly, because it's a living church, the spirit of God will be at work bringing conviction even upon that sinner. Not to now talk of a believer. So a believer in the living church will begin to work, begin to, the word of God, the word of God begin to radiate, begin to, you know, bring life. But he just said, the word that I speak to you, they are not just mere word, they are what? They are spirits. So the word of God will, will, will glow in the life of that believer. And as a collective unit now, it, it, it helps us to, to develop more, to sharpen one another more and and rending helping hand mm. to other bodies to other believers just like uh what Kalishi said in the previous uh, uh uh stuff we we discussed before now that you have several gifts and each of us are are, are gifted there is no creation of god without gifts everyone over we are gifted so you will be selfish okay to not bring your own gift to the table okay i have one of my mentors said in those days of trade and butter, uh, trade and uh, trade, trade and uh, what do they call it? Trade and butter. Yeah, trade. Am, am I correct? Okay. Yes, yes. That that in those days, you, you go to the market, you have the yam in your hand, you know, you need uh, you need corn, so you take corn, I mean yam to the market to collect corn, so you weigh the equivalent of the corn you want and take the equivalent of that yam. I take it and say, okay, I have yam here. And then, so it's not, I'm not saying it's a trade by butter, but you have to bring something on the table. So your gift is also on the table to edify other believers. And as you're doing that, Christ is also edifying you and the body is also edifying you. In, in that process, we're all growing together. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And we'll grow together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brooklyn, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, um, I'll just add the, the, when Jesus established the church, he said, when he said, Upon this rock, the, that's the revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. So, the only entity that the gates of hell will not prevail against is the church, not the single Christian. Meaning that um, if you try to be on, on your own, right, you don't have that assurance. That's why the disciples would have issues and they come and they go to their companies and they would bind together. I'll give you another example in scripture. How did James die? Right, they just took him and killed him. Herod did that. When he took Peter, what did the Bible talk about say? That the church made prayers. And when the church entered into the equation, the situation changed. So the church is indestructible. The entity, the church, is indestructible. And um, just to add to what Baba Mi said, we have to, you know, be plugged into that fellowship. We have to do our own quota, you know, serve and also receive, receive ministries. We have to be built. It's it's so interesting that word edification. You know, I think maybe because the societies are getting more individualistic, it's almost hard to really conceptualize this thing very practical unless God has helped you and you're practicalizing it um, but the truth of the matter is that there is so much that 
There's only so much that one person can do. And when you're in a group, when you're together, like-minded, same fellowship. Wonder why even, you know, not necessarily unbelievers now, even the powers of darkness, they, are, they seem stronger when they are together. It's, there's this thing with unity, right? It's a thing that you see through scripture. That's why even in Ephesians 4, the, the, the apostle gave an injunction by the spirits that we should endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. So it's something that we should do everything possible to stay united one another because it's by staying united that the gates of hell will not prevail. Amen. Thank you very much for that insight. You know, I see the passion where you're talking and come to think of it actually in the world that there, um, when you look at products of companies that came as a result of collaboration, you find out that they are better. And so I, I just want to throw it out there to our friends who are watching that, um, yeah, I think it's a lie. Obviously, it's a lie that the devil wants to sell to, to us as young people that you can actually stand alone and grow alone. It, it's, it's not going to work. It's not also the plan of God. Thank you so much for that insight. So I, I would just um, like to just um, round off on this note. Um, uh, we, we look at the church and some people have said that well the church is more like i don't know if i'm using the right word something like an afterthought um like well the, the jew um was because the jews were rebelling and then god had to come up with the church would you say um bro by me that the church um was actually an initial plan of god did god actually think about the church from the beginning hmm. That's, that's that's a very deep, uh, <laughs> very deep question. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, to get the right answer, I, I would love to, you know, go back to the beginning. Actually, so uh, that being said, let me quickly go to Genesis. Um, yeah, Genesis um, chapter. Okay, I should be chapter three. Yeah, chapter three. Okay, so. Um, I want to quickly go to the, uh, the the answer straight. I don't want to just I want to I don't want to read all the all the verses there. Okay, so I read from verse uh, Genesis chapter three. I read from verse. Uh, okay, so let me hold on, please. Okay, so I read from verse uh, verse fifteen. Okay, it says, "I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed." And shall bruise thy heel, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay, so at this point, there are other stories, you know, before this verse, you know, that God has initially he has set in motion. Immediately, man lost the uh uh the will I call it the let me call it eternal life. <laughs> okay, from that point, God already set in motion, you know. His plan and purpose for humanity, how he's going to bring man back into the fellowship. You can see that Adam was in this fellowship with God from the beginning, and that, that life was to be a kind of eternal life, a life forever. When the sin came, that life was cut short. Man, man was, I mean, Adam died. I mean, the life of God went out of him. So from that point, God said, He's going to what, raise a seed of a woman. That we bruise, you know, the heel. So, so, and that was what happened on the cross. Jesus actually did that on the cross, and that victory was gotten for us. So, from that story, we, we see that God already has in motion the plan that is going to save the world and how he's going to achieve that. So, so, but the means of achieving it <laughs> where, where, where the, let me call it where the children of Israel. Okay, so. They, they were the, the people that God has chosen to bring his purpose and his plan to the world. You can also see our Lord Jesus Christ came through that lineage and all that. So, and, and that was what even uh, Paul the Apostle was saying in Romans chapter 10. In Romans chapter 10. Um, and I'm really explaining this because I want my answer to be coming from the scriptures. <laughs> in Romans chapter 10, Paul, Paul was saying, he said, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. At this point, they lost 
they, they didn't believe in the messiah they did not believe in jesus christ that is their savior they are still hoping for another savior in fact as i've even read their story till now they are still hoping for that savior okay so but paul is saying that these people being the main source that the gospel came to us they themselves don't believe in the gospel and that if they are putting away they are they are they are denying the lord jesus christ and they are cutting away from god eh, brought salvation to us how much more they are abiding in god what will have happened to the world okay what, what, what i mean how will the world be if the jew happen to be you know believing in the lord having a good relationship with jesus christ and they believe in jesus christ and they receive jesus christ i mean the world will have been i don't know i don't know what to say maybe 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 god will have just bring another you know garden of Eden down <laughs> i don't know <laughs> you know i'm just saying but if they are cutting away brought us to christ what will happen to their being with god so um so the answer to that question is that right from the beginning god has a plan to save uh humanity whether the jews uh or not the jews yeah i don't know if i've answered the question yeah thank you very much broken i don't know if you have anything to say uh well first thing i want to say is the question itself that it is it's almost difficult to conceive of anything being an afterthought for god so um because of course he is infinite the bible says his thoughts are very deep so how would you even begin to conceptualize an afterthought for god um, but that being said um to the other side of the question did it was it when these people rebelled that he now said okay you know what i'm going to create the church I think Brabo you may hit it spot on. And if I were to add to what he said, in the book of Jeremiah, you know, God was talking through the prophet Jeremiah about a time that was coming when he was going to create, he said he was talking about the hearts of his people. He said that he put his spirit in them and then he's going to give them a new heart, a heart of flesh. He will write his laws upon their hearts. Now, this thing he was talking about was something that wasn't obtainable then because the holy spirit didn't indwell people at that point it would come upon certain people to do work but the holy spirit wasn't living in them right but god through the prophet jeremiah was talking about that time that was coming and that time was of course going to be heralded by um, the death and resurrection of jesus so i would say that as long as as far back as redemption plan came to being the church was together with it. An interesting scripture for you to ponder about is the scripture that says the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. So, I mean, even redemption plan was even from the foundation of the world. So that would mean that the church would have been even from the foundation of the world. So that's my my, my little 10 cents to that question. All right. Thank you very much. Um, before we bring it to a close, I don't know if um, Sister Love has something to say. Well, I want to thank our panelists. Uh, very grateful for this time spent just delving some of these questions. And I believe, uh, Bro Lua, bro, you'll be wrapping us up, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay. But definitely thank you for your insight and for your passion, as he said. And I look forward to the next episode already. I know. <laughs> but thank you so much. Yeah, so you much thank you. All you right. Welcome. Thank you very much once again for making our time to be here and the insights you have shared. Now to our friends and to our viewer, uh, if there's a phrase that keeps reoccurring in this talk has been that Jesus said, I will build my church and the gate of hell will not prevail against it. You know, we have learned in times of war uh, in countries that when it comes to when the chips are down, as they will say, um, the, the countries begin to pull out their citizens, you know, they, they, they make their citizens priority. And it does not matter what the situation is, the citizens are the priority. And a time is coming at the end of this age that the gate of hell will actually be released against the world and the world is going to be in turmoil. And then uh, the advancement of science and the, the, the depth of knowledge of philosophy and everything we have as humans and that we have acquired will not be enough to save us. And the people that will be the priority 
of the kingdom of God to pull out of this distressing situation is going to be the church. And it's a beautiful family of God. But to be part of the church, you need to know Jesus personally. You need to know him as your savior. You need to know that by default, everybody cannot be part of the church. By default, we cannot be part of the church because we are all sinners by default. The only way to be part of the church is for you to acknowledge your sins and to repent and to believe in what Jesus Christ has done. And it is that easy, you're going to be part of the church. And I can tell you when the distressing situation and circumstance of the world comes, you're going to go with the flight of the church in Jesus' name. Thank you for hanging around. And I also look forward to seeing you at the next um, episode. Thank you.